about Metro Atlanta Urban Farm, Metro Atlanta Urban Farm, we've been here for about 12 years now. Uh, I've been in this urban agriculture movement in the Metro Atlanta area for more than 25 years. Uh, so we worked for Cooperative Extension for a while, for a long time, really, for more than 20 years. And uh, we retired from Cooperative Extension. And at the end of the day, I had to make a decision on what I wanted to do after I retired. But I'd already made that decision. The work that we do at Metro Atlanta Urban Farm is centered around, is centered more around community organizing than it is agriculture. Or I would say it's equally divided between agriculture and community organizing. And so I know somebody want to know what you mean by that. So. When we first started our this program, Urban Agriculture, we were working in some of the most notorious places in the uh, city. Bank headquarters, born homes, those places don't even exist no more. Uh, Carver homes, they, the, the places are there, but they've been revitalized, the names have been changed. The drug dealers have kind of dissipated out to other places. And, um, and, and a lot of the people, have, you know, they, they've become big communities and a lot of the poor people are already gone. And I, I'm not sure where they went. But we started a program that we call the Atlanta Urban Gardening Leadership Training Program. The Atlanta Urban Gardening Leadership Training Program was designed to give uh, uh, marginalized and underserved communities uh, gardening lesson, a leadership lesson, uh, opportunity and a chance to um, fellowship and network with each other. And we did, we, we eventually started an outreach program to the homeless community where once a month those community gardeners were feeding more than 300 folks in the downtown Atlanta area at Peach Street and Pine, uh, on the street, and the Atlanta Union Mission. So they were making nutritional lunches and we were taking them down to those people. That program has evolved into what we are doing right now at Metro Atlanta Urban Farm. Uh, doing certain crops that we are growing. Uh, seniors are able to come in and pick their own uh, greens and take them home and do whatever they want to do. During the pandemic, Metro Atlanta Urban Farm, uh, or during this pandemic, Metro Atlanta Urban Farm has fed more than 25,000 families mm. across the Metro Atlanta area in conjunction with the Atlanta Community Food Bank. We were designated as an emergency relief center uh, in conjunction with the food bank. So we never stopped doing what we were doing uh, during the pandemic. So uh, we would have lines reaching all the way back to uh, Washington, Washington Road, uh, Cleveland Avenue, keeping in line, driving to, picking up food. And uh, we were having churches picking up hundreds of boxes at one time. We would have two uh, USDA uh, truckloads of food just uh, brought out here. Have volunteers like you. Yep. Hello, I'm Farmer Terry, um, and I'm here at Metro Atlanta Urban Farm. Today is Saturday, and I'm here with the Habershaw Works 2021 class. And Mr. Bobby has them just doing some basic weeding, but um, this is one of my favorite places to go. So I just want to give you a tour of the garden. You can see the house here in the back and all the structures here houses. and so mr bobby has planted in rows here he already has a lot growing here i'm in the middle of the eggplants on one side here and the pepper plants here and plenty of squash that have already already grown out and you're really gonna have to pick that squash pretty fast because squash grows really fast and over here i'm gonna jump over here we have some cherry type tomatoes 
and these are really spread out and I think he's gonna just let these grow wild without staking them because they're indeterminate tomatoes. So I think that's what he's going for. And uh, let's see Oh, and over here, we have garlic that was planted probably last fall. That's probably about ready to be harvested. And you can tell when garlic is ready to be harvested because the um, leaves start to die back. And as you can see, those leaves have died back already. And so let's go on and see what else is in the garden. This is a magical, beautiful garden. I love coming here. All right, we have tomatoes also on this side. And as you can see, these are not quite as well developed as these are because they're different varieties. So different varieties of tomatoes grow at different times. And back here, we have lots of sage. Oh, look at the sage, how beautiful that is. Lots of sage out here as well. So, also in the hoop house, this is a good way to extend the garden, especially if you have pretty cold weather. We have what we call a hoop house. And you can also plant inside the hoop house. Uh, you can plant in here, especially in the winter time, and get, get more things growing because you can let down all of this and keep everything um, pretty warm inside. But uh, right now, he has a lot of tomato plants and beans in the hoop house, and he has the sides up because um, you want to let as much light in as you can. And also, still have some leftover um, Swiss chard. Not one of my favorite things. Take a look at it. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful Swiss chard. And of course, more tomato plants here. And over here, cucumber plants. And these are probably going to have to be balanced up or something uh, because those are going to get pretty big. And also, he has solar panels back here. It's a good way to conserve energy with the solar panels. I hope you enjoyed our tour of part of the garden. Thank you so much for joining us and happy gardening everybody. Hope you're growing something too. Bye-bye. Uh, he just finished up uh, his degree in divinity and uh, so he, he's passionate about this uh, urban agriculture, this agricultural work. So uh, he's back with us again. So he's going to be providing leadership and guidance uh, for the team today. Feet. So if I could have just each person walk through this one time and just step off on the other end, this is leech walk. Walk off on. Just walk. Yep. Good. Yep. Next person. Okay. Uh, you, you, you'll be fine, but you know, just walk like Go ahead. Okay, great. I planted it too early. That could be a soil issue as well. Or a soil yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, frost, you want to typically plant within season to avoid your stuff from actually dying of frost. It's always best to check when the last chill date is uh, before you start your spring crops. Uh, right now, it's good to plant anything that's warm, right? And you can even plant collars and different cool weather things. You just got to put them in shaded areas, you know, they'll be just fine. So this is a great period to really plant anything and everything. But during the cool period, you want to stick to your leafy greens, your broccoli, your collards, your kale, uh, your mustard greens, stuff like that, because that's going to be perfectly fine during the chill period. Okay, so that's the just stay in line. Like, look, this is designed perfectly. Like, nature has four seasons for a reason, two of which are transitional, the other two are full. So, unless you're in California, unless you're in California, that's right. There's no it never rains in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm getting one more. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm scared of you. I don't know what kind of plant this is, but they seem to like it. Uh, 
Jordan, but I feel like it's Jordan. Okay. And it's undesirable yeah. in the garden, so this probably don't want it, right? Uh, that's what I was trying to say. Oh, you don't know the desire. Let's ask him. But you have not. Wait, it's the bowl. I think so. I think he's I think it's super Because it looks like, it looks like amaranth, really. But it could be, I've seen amaranth as like a wild kind of an amaranth. So that's what it actually looks like. So, I mean, that's just the question. Pick it up a little bit for that, but you want it to stay on the board. You have a nice rocking yeah. motion. Bring up that back part. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna take these, stack them. A little bit more, a little bit more. That looks good though. So I'm gonna stack these. You're gonna, gonna sort of do a Julianne cut. Oh yeah? It's gonna make it look beautiful, but we also get a nice peppery taste from it and a nice crunch as well. Alright, it's a nice smooth rocking motion like that. I think that pepper is perfect. That's the difference between the pepper and the pepper. Pepper bay. Pepper bay. Denise, thank you so much. I'll follow the pepper. Yeah, I'll follow the pepper. Yeah, I'll follow the pepper. Yeah, that pepper too. That's I smell some pepper. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. So now, I'm going to take my frozen sweet peas. I just never come up the room until just a little bit. Okay. Go straight in here. So yeah, he's using frozen sweet peas. It's very difficult to find sweet peas fresh. Right. I think sweet peas are kind of underrated. Yeah. They're not really used too often. So I wanted to kind of celebrate them today. You know. Yeah, yeah, we can. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Only place I know is selling fresh and yeah. covers. Okay, so that covers will have some fresh. I definitely believe in fresh and fresh. Yeah. Nice and simple, easy. Oh, yeah. I want to bring out one more volunteer. Right, Let's do it. Is this the young lady from the house of the ocean today? Fresh. Yeah, literally just bashing this up. 
it. You want to smash it and smush it. Okay, yes, exactly. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm going to come behind you, season it with the cracked black pepper. All right. Come on, drone around. So what I'm doing now, and if it starts climbing up the edge, you can kind of take that and push it back down. But uh, I'm gonna take my shallot, do a nice little dice on it. You like shallots? I like them better than onion. It's a single serve onion. It is a serve onion. I prefer them because it's just me. Well, I mean, like, wait, what can I do with this before I go back? Season some other food. Right. I like salads a lot. Well, I'm going to be, I'm an old mad person. I got my glasses in my pocket. I'm going to put them all over. <laughs> Keep going. That's going to take about five minutes, probably. All right. So now, we're going to go ahead and season it with some salt. Some little cool. season with some lemon zest not the juice but the zest if you put the juice you'll just color it'll start cooking it's acid you'll just color it you want a nice bright green color this is going to maintain those nutrition as well see that's chef's note right there that is chef's note <laughs> i'm going to zest my lemon they know the science i'm going to dump that in so this is going to be it's going to eat really clean really aromatic Fresh, so about these mint leaves, which I'm going to use here. So most shelves, most people say don't bruise the herbs, but bruise the herbs, but bruise the herbs in the food because it releases more flavor. If you bruise on the board, the flavor goes to the board and it won't transfer over. What you want to do to actually bruise it. Bruise it like scrunch it up? Bruise it like bash it. Oh, okay. Violet. Right, right. Mash it like the rest of the thing. Go in there with my mint leaves. It's looking good. Keep bashing, keep bashing. Anyone wants ricotta on their toast or no? You do? You have some? So let's do, we'll do every other Cristini with the uh, with the ricotta. I want to bring out one person to do that. I miss ricotta. You want to come on? I want to volunteer. It almost seems like it's like three of us have some hot chocolates. You? Only three? Yeah, like two. Looking good. 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 That's perfect. I like to season the ricotta just a little bit with some salt. Yeah. So we're going to add in a little bit of, it's going to help that out. So I'm going to add in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. It's going to give it some grassiness. What I mean by grassiness is kind of an earthy, natural taste to it. It's getting green. It's very green. So we're going to add a little bit <laughs> That's superb. I think it's great. That's really good. Thank you so much. She's a good assistant, though. Right. All right. So now, oh, you want to taste that? Okay. Okay. No, I wait for it. Okay, you so I'm literally going to start building these crostinis now that I toasted off earlier. Okay. Everybody make sure you have your recipes. Actually, I need one more volunteer. One more volunteer. One more volunteer. Oh. 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 Okay, chef and chef. Alright, so all we're gonna do, we're not gonna cross this. So you'll take this spoon mm -hmm. and you'll put uh this product on top of that product. Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And you'll take this spoon and smear it on top of that. Product. Mm -hmm. Next year, so give it another level of pepperiness to it. You're gonna get it from the radish and you're gonna get it from that cracked black pepper as well. I'm gonna taste some olive oil, extra virgin. I wanna season my bowl a little bit. 
I'm gonna go in a black pepper and salt. Then I'm gonna squeeze in some lemon juice. So I basically essentially just made a salad dressing right here. You see in the bowl. Okay. It's essentially a salad dressing, usually three parts to one. Extra virgin olive oil and lemon juice. I'm gonna toss it up my watercress in the olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper. Nice and lightly. Isn't that nice? It's a simple little Alright, so toss it like that so you don't bruise. Alright, so that was fun. Alright, so I'm just gonna simple it. Thank you. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna do, gonna do this. I'm gonna put a little bit of radish now. Radish on top. Nice and look at the color, right? So I'm going with my greens here. No secrets, no tricks. Really straightforward and Good job, man. really healthy. Oh, Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Really enjoy. I got some yeah. thanks here. simply because I'm low carb keto eating so okay. um, the grains are good but I do a lot of veggies in here and it doesn't matter what kind of vegetables you use um, it's totally up to you you just want to try and get you know at least some good fresh stuff in here um, everything is fresh except for the peas these are field peas I've drained the field peas you can use any kind of pea you want to or you can admit this if you want to like I said there's no rhyme no reason basically I've taken the quinoa and I have plain white quinoa I cook the quinoa cook the quinoa off yesterday put this in the fr refrigerator chopped up my vegetables this is an easy dish the hardest part is to get everything chopped up ahead of time so i have red peppers you can use any kind of pepper you like i also have some green peppers here and i'm going to throw in my green peppers as well so you see this is heavy on the veggies to cook oh no the quinoa cooks in about I said maybe 15 minutes at most. It, it's very quick. You cook that quicker than you would cook rice. And you have to be careful so that you don't overcook it. And I actually almost overcooked it. And it, to me, the, the way you tell when the quinoa is done, there's a little, it's a round ball, but there's a little seed. Looks like a little circle. A little seed. You see those? Mm -hmm. Whenever those start to separate from the thing, it's ready. That's how you know it's yeah, that's how I know it's ready. Once it, I first start to see it, and I first start to see that uh, quinoa burst open and those start to come out, it's ready. Go ahead and take it off and cool it down because you don't want it to keep cooking. So I'm just going to cook this down. And you can cook this down for as long or as little as you like. I like to cook it down a little bit, but not too much, you know. You can add soy sauce or aminos to this if you like. And I also like to add a little bit of uh, sesame oil at the end. And the only season I'm using is, I'm using garlic powder because I didn't have time to chop up fresh garlic. But I prefer fresh mixed garlic in here. And a little Cajun season. I'm not really using a lot of salt here. You know, you salt as you like. Don't tell people how much salt you use. That's up to you. The salt is necessary to, to, to prepare food. Like, no salt. It's, it's, it's hard to cook without salt. Who says, who says no salt? I have, well, most of the older people who are on a diet, and the doctor says, but I always ask him, like, did he say no salt or did he say cut back on salt? You know, and if he say, okay, you can have a tablespoon of salt a day, tell people, measure that tablespoon out and use it, put it in here, and use it throughout the day as you see fit. 
it. That's yeah. your tablespoon, you know? Whatever you cook, whatever you eat, that's all the salt you can have. And if you prepare food from scratch, you gonna know that, you know, ain't no salt in the food because I prepared it myself. When you go into the restaurant or you uh, buy some already prepared, you don't know how much sodium is already in there. You need salt too, if you're Yeah, you need, you need some salt. Yeah, you gotta have some salt. People kill me, I have a co-worker like that. It's like, Miss Terry, did you put salt in it? Yeah, of course I did. And he still go back there and eat it every time. That's how pretty that is. <laughs> Every time he, he asks about the soda, then he say you put too much soda, too much oil in it. And oh, wait a minute. So you see how pretty those colors are? That's why you want to get a lot of different ones. Um, I'm gonna add my peas and carrots here. And the last thing I'll put in here will be my kid. Ooh. I forgot the zucchini. I'm going to start freezing before they go there. And see, that's I'll what we were talking about. Don't, don't let nothing go bad. Freeze it, dehydrate it, do something with it before you let it go bad. Yeah, about that. Mm -hmm. So, and this is about it, y'all. Yeah, I don't know how to work with it. I'm going to start to add a little bit of seasoning. This is our garlic powder. Start to add a little bit of seasoning. <laughs> this is a, uh, um, I teach a lot of cooking classes for extension and I try not to use much salt so I try to teach people how to season as well as they can without adding salt and this one I found I like my dear 14 spices no salt added it's going to give you a lot of flavor without adding salt and then add your salt later on <laughs> so you see you can add a lot of flavor with this because there's no salt in here and I could even add um, if Justin had some of his uh, lemon zest I could even add some lemon zest in here I'm going to add a little pepper <laughs> So I just want to take a little time to cook these. And the peas are already cooked, so we don't have to add the peas until we're right near the end. Well, not yet. I'm going to wait before I add my sesame oil. But I just like to add sesame oil at the end just to give it a little, mm, a little something, something. Just understand, y'all, if, if it's the people out here that don't cook, you can't cook with the sesame oil. You only add it as an ingredient just to give it a little something at the end. You, you couldn't just put it in here and, and, and just cook it all with, with the session all, man. Yeah, that's definitely come out tasting. Woo! Like it, yeah. Like it's just a you know, drink. So you right. see, you can add whatever you want into here. This could be rice. You can do this with rice. And I think I gave y'all the recipe with the rice on the back as well. So you can do it with quinoa. You can do it with rice. You can experiment with different kinds of rice, like the red cargo rice. You know, that's really good as well. Black rice, yeah. And that stuff is more available now in stores like Kroger and stuff. Um, you can buy it by the pound, I know, at um, Whole Foods. So All right, so add a little lemon zest in here. And look how colorful your veggies are. You can put whatever you want. With anything you can think of to put in here, you can put in here. It really doesn't matter. Let me think, what else do I put in here? Oh, uh, sugar snap peas, snow peas, asparagus. I like to make sure I add something green in here. Now, when you add the... Um, the zucchini, just know that the zucchini is very soft. It's going to cook very quickly. That's why I added it next to the end. And so at this point, I think we're about ready to go. Hopefully everything is cooked in here. Okay, and some of See, I did, I prepped everything on Thursday and Friday to make it easy. So if, whenever you got time, just prep some stuff and put it in the refrigerator. Prep it, put it in so you don't do everything and it feel like, oh, it's going to take forever, you know. Yeah. It do, right, yeah. that's what I be doing. Or if you have stuff, you cook some early in the week, you have some leftovers, throw the leftovers in here. You can put corn in here. You know, for me, that would be adding more carbohydrates, which so I don't you, want. Do, you, do, you, do your refrigerator look like that? You can put in, like, vegetables and stuff? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I prep a lot because, you know, I'm just tired sometimes. So when I get home, I might feel like I just don't have like a prep day, food. then a cook. You know, prep yeah. day, then cook day, yeah. Yeah, that's what I need to do. And then the cooling day. Like how you had it already in the bags when uh -huh. came here. Yeah, I just, I, like I said, I started this on Thursday. Yeah. That's a lot of quinoa, but we have a lot of veggies. Yeah. And so. another thing, like, it's good to use those plastic bags to store in the refrigerator. Okay. You got sauces, mm -hmm. uh, vegetables, because you can lay them flat and freeze them and stack them. Like, yeah. You know, and you don't have all the 30 dishes you gotta clean. That's what I like about it. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, that's what I love. Just go ahead. So you see? And you have different colors of quinoa too. You have the red um quinoa, then you have I think a darker one. You have about three different colors. Sometimes you get the bag and it's mixed with all three. I like to just do one because to me it seems like 
some king wines are a little tougher than others. Like the white to me is the easiest and the quickest to cook. The red, you know, um, they, they tend to take a little bit longer. So I like to keep them separate. So at this point, our dish is ready. So the only thing you really need to do is season it up a little bit more. Wasn't that easy? Everybody can make this dish. You can eat on this dish for a while. Sometimes I'll make this on Sunday. I can eat on it through Thursday. It stays well in the fridge, you know. And then sometimes I'll even go back and add some more stuff to it. I'll even have some more stuff here. Yeah, throughout the week, if I have some more stuff, I'll go back and add some more. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in my, oh man, okay. Okay, I'm going to add in my sesame oil. Like I said, not too much, but just enough because we've got a lot of stuff in here. may seem like I'm doing a lot, but it's not considering how many we have in here. Yeah, so let me try and taste this and see what we taste like here. I've been looking for one. You know, you just figured it out the time. Mm -hmm. Give them a salt. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, I think it's ready. I think it's ready. <laughs> 